always like it when I expand my vocabulary. Let me explain. To people who are into collecting old computers or collectors of other neat stuff, you will recognize the following. It's late at night and you are scrolling through your favorite pages on eBay. Well, recently the following happened and I made this in retrospective bit dramatic YouTube short about it. I just want to know, is this something that happens to other people who like retro stuff? Because I was just on eBay and I saw this awesome listing of an MZ80K and what really struck me was the ginormous collection of software it came with and they were asking quite... So yes, I spent a large amount of money, well even the largest amount yet, on a vintage computer. In the comments of that YouTube short someone informed me about the name of this very dangerous pastime. A pastime simply put where you look at a listing on eBay and then for fun press the make offer button. This dangerous pastime is called eBay trolling. And while my first offer wasn't accepted by the seller because they had already received a higher offer, well they said, I found myself clicking the accept button when they sent me a counter offer. Yes, that is how my largest purchase, I'm afraid yet, occurred. Fast forward two weeks and I find a pita box near the front door of the house. Before we move on, I want to quickly return to that example listing of a $19,000 computer. I scrolled down to the description to see if there was any explanation for their asking price, which there wasn't, but nearly $20,000 for a computer. Jeez. I moved the box, which wasn't light, upstairs. I was a bit worried when I saw the hole in the side and the dent on top. Let's open it up and see. If you paid close attention to the YouTube short, you saw that in this box we will find a Sharp MZ80K. The computer, of course, is very nice to have. But what I'm even more interested in is on top in these two boxes. But also this green binder I think will hold nice stuff. It has Sargon written on it. I removed some of the plastic bubble wrap to see if the CRT display survived the journey, which it luckily did. Let's lift it out of the box. I did find this silvery looking plastic thingy, not sure what this broke off from. Looks to be in great condition, really nice. The MZ80K has such a lovely design. The plastic part doesn't seem to belong to the MZ80K, which is a good thing. What I didn't say yet is that this computer came all the way from the UK, but since they use the same amount of power as here in Europe, there's no trouble. I can just connect an apron cable. Funnily, the case didn't have any screws in it, so I could open it up without needing any tools. The inside seemed to be in nice shape, no obvious damage or cables that came loose during shipping. Shining a light on the power supply confirmed that that part was also fine. So of course, the next step is closing the lid and doing a smoke test. No smoke expected. And after a few seconds, it came to life. Great. I want to go off on a little side tangent nobody probably is interested in. But this comes from the UK and actually I could have picked it up myself because I spent some time in Scotland where I saw this amazing castle named Craig Miller's Castle. I always thought I would find ruins like this boring, but walking through an actual castle is pretty neat. Pretending to be real tourists, we made sure to always be in the second floor front row seats of every bus we took. Looked at Edinburgh Castle from a distance, which is quite a sight to behold. Looked at a bunch of sleeping koalas at Edinburgh Zoo. Walked through the amazing National Gallery and another highlight being the lovely National Museum of Scotland. The first exhibit showed a lot of animals, like this panda or the skeleton of this mega sloth. This section was great too, with planes hanging off the ceiling. The exhibits focused on energy and technology. They displayed an Enigma machine. These cases were filled with phones, video phones and normal phones. I recognized this device from a YouTube channel where they used it to be their own ISP, Internet Service Provider. I 
as expected, they would also show some nice computers. Not the MZ80K, but an Apricot, Osborne, BBC and Spectrum, among others. Also a speak and spell in this case. I had already felt its presence, but then I saw it from the other side of the building. A Commodore pet. Let's go over to it. A lovely example of one, accompanied by an Apple One. The blue ones are the nicest, I think. Also in the museum, Bianca recognized something from Star Wars in this ancient piece. Oops, that side tangent was a bit long. Let's take a tram and move back to the MZ80K. So in these little boxes, they packed all the cassette tapes that I got with the computer. In my opinion, a cold mine and a great project for adventures in archiving. More on that, of course, in a separate video. I refer to this purchase as eBay trolling, but the sheer amount of tape shown on the pictures was irresistible to not acquire for my archive. I figured that a lot with so many tapes, aka an opportunity to add a lot of more obscure titles to my archive, would be rare to see again, as cassette-based computers tend to come without any cassettes, as I expect they get misplaced with normal music cassettes or simply thrown out. Well, that is how I whitewashed this purchase for myself anyways. Also, I want to archive all the documents that came with the computer. For instance, it came with this notebook, listing some of the programs on cassettes. But also this dot matrix paper, with the printed out code for Sargon, the chess program. I believe there are loads of Sargon related program variations on the tapes. Looking at other papers, I think that the original owner got this computer for writing programs, which is neat. I'll make sure to cross out all personal information, of course, since I believe this came from an estate sale. Also, some printout articles, something on Space Invaders. I also saw a tape with that title on it. Oh cool, the MZ40K, the sort of Kim one of this line of computers. In the archiving video, I'll show the real interesting stuff in a little bit more detail. Since it came with so many tapes, I got a bunch of these storage cases from a thrift store to more properly store them. Here they only charge like a euro fifty, but in some places they like to ask stupid prices for these cheap cases. So on the archiving, I already started and things are going smoothly, but the sheer amount of software and the fact loading isn't fast makes it quite the project. Also managing so many files can be challenging. Although for this project, I think the biggest challenge will be to find a suitable emulator. The upside to this being from the UK is that all software will be in English. Keep an eye on my archive site as there the software will pop up first. A very small group of viewers might know that this is not my first MZ80K. No, this is my second. I already got one here in the Netherlands. That one I found out at home didn't work. I combined the pickup with a visit to a museum. It wouldn't boot into the monitor program and displayed weird stuff. Now that I have a second working one, I can do some troubleshooting. And of course I'll make a video about that too. So summarizing, I got my second MZ80K and spent a bit too much money on it, as I fell victim to my own eBay trolling. But looking at all the fun I had with it already, I'm afraid it was money well spent. I hope that as I thank you for watching this video, you experienced it as your time well spent. Thanks and bye.